For this homework assignment, you are asked to do exercises 10.1 on pages 305 and 306, problems 5, 6, 8, 12, and 14. For this assignment, you were to use truth tables to determine whether or not the following arguments are valid or invalid. Beginning with problem number 5, not A, if and only if, not B, B or A, therefore not A. And I'm not going to go through all the steps, step one, two, and three, like I did when I was explaining how we do this. I'm just going to go ahead and skip to the truth table, completed truth table that has this on it. Now, hopefully you know from having done some of these at this point, what you do is you put the, premise and the premises and conclusion all on a single line, and then you complete the truth table just like you always do. Uh, so for this one, here we have the first premise, not A, if and only if, not B, B or A, and then we use this forward slash to indicate therefore, not A. And then we just construct the truth table just like we always do. We have our columns here, true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false, and then we put these values in underneath where these uh, atomic propositions appear. We then complete the truth table by filling in the truth values for the connectives, beginning with connectives of least scope. And I did that here. And lo and behold, what do we have? This is true, false, false, true. And then we have true, 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 false. And then we have false, false, true, true. And what we're looking for to determine whether or not it's invalid is we're looking for a row in which, we're looking for a row in which the premises are true and the conclusion is false. And as it turns out, the very first row proves this argument is invalid because here we have the main connector for the first premise, it's true. The main connector for premise number two is true. And yet the conclusion, as we see right here, is false. So even if we didn't go any further, we could determine that this argument is invalid because of row number one. Now, as it turns out, in this argument, there are no other rows which show that to be invalid. Uh, sometimes we will find uh, an argument in which more than one row proves invalidity, but in this argument, all, we, all you need is one row to prove it's invalid, and as it turns out, row one is that row. Exercise 10.1, uh, problem number six. Your argument is A and B, therefore A or B. And I'm going to go ahead and show you the truth table here, and here we have our premise one, A and B. We have our forward slash, and then we have A or B. And here are, are the truth values for the main connective of the premise. And here are the truth values for the main connective of the conclusion. And as you see, here is true and true. And once you see a false premise, you can disregard that row because that's not going to help you. Because again, what we're looking to prove is invalidity. And we have to have a two true, or we have to have the premises be true. So if one premise is false, that's not going to get us you know, true, true, false, or fault, true, false, or whatever we're looking for, however many premises we have. So as it turns out, this argument is actually valid. We don't have any row in which the premises are true and the conclusion is false. So this argument is valid. Because it's not invalid, the only option left is that it is valid. Which, I think that's kind of a surprising result. I mean, in a way it's not if you think about it, but in another way it is. Uh, saying A and B, therefore, we can conclude A or B. Yeah, we can. We can conclude that. Okay, argument number eight. Uh, if A, then not A. If B, then A. This is this one's confusing. If, if B, then A, then B. Uh, therefore, A, if and only if, not B. Now, if you can, in your head, tell me this is valid or invalid without doing a truth table, you're much smarter than I am. So I went ahead and I constructed the truth table for this. And we can see here is our first premise. If A, then not A. If, if B, then A, then B. And we have our forward slash. Therefore, A, if and only if not B. And I've gone ahead and I've filled in the truth values for all the main connectives. Uh, you can see right here the truth values for the main connectives, the truth values for the main connectives. And... As it turns out, we do not have a row in which the premises are true and the conclusion is false. In fact, we only have one row in which both the premises are true. So once you figure that out, you, honestly, the way to do this is just skim down uh, the argument uh, or the rows 
I should let me fry this one. You skim down the rows, and if you find the one in which the premises are true, you don't have to, you don't have to go through line by line like like I've been doing. I've just been doing that to kind of show you how it's done. But uh, just skim down, and find okay, this is true. This one's true. So let me look at this one, see if it's false. Nope. Skim down, true, false. Then just keep moving on because you were looking for where the premises are true. So if you have a row in which the conclusion, I mean the premises are false. You can just keep going on. But anyway, this argument is valid. We don't have any instance where the premises are true and the conclusion is false. Number 12, P and Q, premise 1, premise 2, Q and R. Therefore, if P, then R. Now, this is kind of an interesting one because look here. The conclusion is a hypothetical, right? The conclusion is a hypothetical. So it, whereas... Uh, the, neither premise is a hypothetical, so you might be wondering, well, how in the world could you possibly conclude a hypothetical from non-hypothetical propositions? Uh, but keep in mind, as I've said, you can always rewrite hypotheticals as non-hypotheticals, or vice versa. So uh, you can't just rule out a hand that this argument is invalid. We're going to need to do a truth table for that. And I went ahead, this one was a long one, it's a huge chart here. And I filled this in, and here we had th um, you know, our three columns. And since we had three different atomic propositions, the first column, remember we do 2 to the power of 3, so that's going to get us 8 rows, and the first half of the first row are true, and the second half are false. Then there were 4 trues here, so we come here and we do half of the 4, which is 2 true, 2 false, 2 true, 2 false, then true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. All right? And then we come here and we fill in our different propositions, um, our, I mean our premises, premise 1, premise 2, and the conclusion, which I've done. Premise 1 is here, P and Q, uh, Q and R is premise 2, forward slash, and then our conclusion. And then what we do is we fill in the truth values the way we always do. And you notice we only have one row in which both premises are true, the very first one. And for that reason, we can just ignore the entire rest of the chart because that's not going to help us. We have to have true premises and a false conclusion. We don't have true premises and a false conclusion up here anywhere. And so this is actually a valid argument. This is a valid argument. Number 14. If A, then not. This is confusing. If A, then not. If B, then C. A, therefore B. Uh, and here, you might see this little period here. I'm like, why did he have that period here? Well, the reason I have that period here is I couldn't get the uh, line underneath this to extend out unless I put a period here. So um, that's uh, that exists because of my technical incompetence and for no other reason. So here we have three different atomic propositions, even though this is kind of, I, I think this is peculiar. I don't know why the C is introduced here because it doesn't play a role in either the second premise or the conclusion, but... Anyway, we have three different ones, so we're going to have to have two to the third power. We're going to have to have eight rows, and our chart's going to look like this. And here we have true, 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 four trues and four faults, two true, two faults, and then one true, one faults, all the way down. We fill in all those uh, truth values just like we always do, but then we fill in the truth values for the connectives, beginning with connectives of least scope. And then we fill in the truth values for the main connectives. And here we only had two um, premises, just like a lot of our other arguments. Premise one is this entire proposition right here. Premise two is just A. So we didn't really have to do a lot of work for that. We just had to trans, uh, transpose this right here in the first column to this column right here. And the same thing for the conclusion. Not much going on there. It's just repeating B. Then once we do that, we just look and see if we can find anywhere we have true premises and a false conclusion. And here's what's nice about this one, is we know that A has half true and half false. Um, so we could just come down here where the faults begin, and we know that nothing beyond this point is going to help us. So, I mean, we can just completely disregard this because that we're not going to have at that point... Uh, you know, it's not going to be possible to have true premises and a false conclusion because all of these premises we know are going to be false. So then we can look up here and we can say, all right, well, these first four are going to be true. Are there any others that are true? Yes, this row right here. But this row, we have true premises and a true conclusion. 
There's nowhere up here where we have true premises because these and uh, false conclusion. It doesn't exist. And so this argument is also a valid argument. Now, I know I went through these rather quickly. I didn't want to go through the all the steps of filling in all the values for the propositions and their connectives uh, because at this point it's just kind of repeating the same thing over and over again. Uh, what this lesson was designed to do was to teach you how to look for validity and if you can construct a truth table and if you can look to see if the premises are true and the conclusion is false you can determine validity with the truth table. It's actually uh, if you if you know how to construct a truth table at this point, this this process is actually quite simple. Uh, the only thing that would be at all problematic is at this point if you didn't know how to construct a truth table, then you, yeah, you're going to be having problems. But if you can, which I hope that you can, um, determining validity is just just adding one more step, which you're just looking for true premises and a false conclusion. So. Hopefully you're getting this. If you're not, like always, please feel free to email me and I can hopefully answer any questions that you might have.